How's it going, PD team? Yet again, I have another special and important tutorial for you today with more advanced Redshift users in mind. Today, we're going to be making an ultra triplanar texture loader control node. Basically, we're making a unified triplanar node that controls all of the loaded bitmap textures in series, making management much easier, faster, and significantly more organized. And it's reusable. It will condense all of your linked images into one tidy node. You'll definitely want to add this resource to your library so you never have to make it again. With that being said, let's dive in. There are two problems you've probably run into with the default triplanar that our node at Polygon Division solves. The first issue is scale, which uses non-scene scale units, so we'll be fixing that. Also, the node's rotation data uses radians, not degrees. Let's quickly take a look and see what it actually means in this example. So we all know what degrees of rotation are, they're on a compass, but radians are slightly different. So when we consider radians, radians are the base is a semicircle, and that's pi, so this value can continues along, we've got pi, which is 3.14, which is 180 degrees. We then take that 3.141 times it by 2, so we get 6.282, which is a full 360 degrees. So one degree of rotation is this decimal here. If you forget what a radian is, which you'll need to have in your pocketbook, you can always go to Google and do a search, degrees to radians, and you can see one degree of rotation equals this value here. So you can copy and paste this when we do our conversion. Lastly, when you have several linked textures with multiple triplanars, it becomes cumbersome making adjustments to all of them at the same time. All of your problems will be solved with what I'm calling the Ultra Triplanar Node. Let's finally get to noting this thing out. So here's what we're going to be building out. You can see we have this Super Triplanar Node right here called the PD Ultra Triplanar. And this node programmatically does all the calculations for us and links all the textures. So you can see if I select it here, you can see here's the list of all of our gaming assets. And then down at the bottom is a controller that unifies all the transforms for all these textures for scale, rotation, and then the blending amount for the Triplanar. And there's other controls that you can add if you'd like. I kept it simple, but down at the bottom, you can see here's the triplanar control nodes. So we can rotate on X, Y, and Z. And you'll notice that we've got degrees of rotation, whereas the triplanar node does not use degrees of rotation. It uses radians. Also, you can see our size is set to centimeters. We're using the scene scale to control this. So if I wanted this to be 500 centimeters, I can just type in 500 and so on. So let's go ahead and build this thing out. Okay, so here we are with the starter project. I've got a plane that I set to a thousand units. I'm going to go to my node editor here and we're going to leave displacement and I'm going to delete the volume the these other ones here. We don't need opacity. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here and bring in overall tint. So I'm going to control click. That'll come in later. And then I'll just quickly clean this up here. So the material inputs we're going to be using is color, metalness, roughness, bump, and overall tint and displacement. So that's a good jumping off point. This this node that we're going to be building out, not every texture is going to have metalness, I know, or not have a bump map or not have ambient occlusion. I'm kind of building this out to where you can have the, mo the most flexibility with it. So what we'll do is we'll come over here and we're going to double click and bring in a tripod planer down at the bottom. And with this triplanar, what we want to do is we want to load up all the parameters. So I'm going to bring in the blend amount and the scale and the rotation. So these are our inputs that we're going to be doing. So I like starting out with the texture. So I've got a texture pack that I downloaded and I'm going to start with the color. I'll just drag it in. No, I don't want to move it because these are just placeholders and I'll call this one color. Okay. And we're going to plug it into the triplanar and then plug this into color like so. And then what we want to do is we want a control node that's going to control is we're going to make a group and I'll say convert and we'll take the scale drag it in and rotation, drag it in a new input. So this guy right here, I like changing to a nice blue color like so. And this is what's going to be controlling all of these sizes for our different triplanars. So we'll come in here and we're going to bring in a div and this one's going to change the scale. So I'm going to call it scale and we want to scale one and then we're going to divide zero. So we're going to take our scale, plug it into the output. And then we're going to take and drag the bottom one because we're going to do one divided by the scene scale. So I'll do new input and I'll call this scale two parentheses and then do centimeters. So it looks like that. And this will convert our scene scale to this funny sizing. Okay, next one we're going to do is we're going to do another div, but we're going to do a vector div because we're going to do rotation. And rotation has three vector inputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and do that funny number. So if you forget it, you can go here and copy this value by Googling degrees to radians. And you're going to plug this into the bottom three, paste, paste, paste. And there we go. So we'll take this, put it in here, and then take the first value, do new input, and this one we'll call it rotation. We can't leave this by default, so we're going to change this in, this output, the input, so we'll go to edit port. I'm just right clicking. And what we want to do is we want to change this from unit to degree, and there we go. So now you can see we have degrees, and then we have the scale. And we're going to leave these here just like that. So then what we can do is we can come in here, call this triplanar color, and let's drag in our other, next one is metalness. 
call it metal, stack it. Then we're gonna do roughness, and I'm just dragging the texture in. And you wanna name these because these are gonna get changed out. And then we're gonna do bump map, so we'll do normal. Bump. And last one, we brought in overall tint, which is gonna be our ambient occlusion. So we'll call this AO. Just like that. Next, what we want to do is we want to, we're going to be eventually linking the texture output inputs here. So you're going to right click on this and say file path, right click, add input, file path, right click, file path, file path, file path. We'll separate these. This goes right here. We'll be adjusting those in a sec. So here's our first one. We're going to duplicate this by holding control and dragging downward. Take our image texture, drag it in here to this next one. Rename this to metalness, plug it in. And we're going to take our scale and our rotation like that. And then you're going to repeat this step for how many nodes that you have that you're linking. So next one is roughness. Plug in roughness, size. You might as well do the blend mode here. So I'm going to take blend mode, drag it in, blend them out, blend them out, blend them out. So we'll go in here to the folder and we'll link blend them out to blend them out go out. So now we have a scale, rotation, and blend amount hooked up. Next one we'll do is bump map. Now this one here is going to require a bump map, so we'll take this, smooth this out, do bump. Like that. And last one, the AO, blend amount. And we have one more texture that I almost forgot, and that's going to be displacement. So we'll drag displacement in. And this one goes all the way over here. Before I plug it in, let's go ahead and add a displacement. Put it underneath, drag our link in, drag this into displacement. Displacement goes into here, blend mode goes into here. Rotation, scale. Make sure you link those up properly. And now you can see we've got this node structure. Before you go and do this next step, just make sure you've got everything linked up properly, like these are all going in properly, nothing's twisted. And then what you're going to do is you're going to select all of these, like so. And we're going to right-click on one of them and say group nodes or do Alt-G. Whoa, 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 hold on a second. So you made it this far. Clearly, you're enjoying the content. Would you consider clicking the thanks button on this video to help grow the channel's community so I can make more great content just for you? Any amount is greatly appreciated. If money is tight right now, then do me a favor and just smash that like button immediately. Now, back to the video. And everything gets noodled. We'll fix that in a second. Call it Ultra Triplanar. And then let's figure out the mix up. So I have no idea why it does this, but we can fix this. So first is color. So I'm just clicking and dragging. Then we got metalness is next. Roughness comes next. This one here is bump. And this one is displacement. So bump changes order. There we go. So now they're in the correct order. Then what we're going to do is we want to expose. So this node will have the properties all here in a nice list. Also, let's give this a nice color. I like 216, like that. So let's go inside and let's link this up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and export these out into the new input fields. Now you can put the triplanar fields first. I like having them at the bottom because I'll load it up the textures first and then do the triplanar. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna go here, right click, just click and let go, let go. And this one we need to add file path like that. And then we'll rename these color. There we go. So we name them and then we're going to do our triplanar size, rotation and blend them out. And now you can see when we go here to the node here, go to inputs, you'll see there's the links and then the triplanar is at the bottom. So we're not going to be doing these inputs so we can go ahead and delete those and we're almost done. Now let's go ahead and fix the UI. So you'll notice here, we don't have a title for each of these that says which field the input is for. So we'll do that. And we also don't have one here for the triplanar. So let's go ahead and fix that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the node, click edit resource, and then we get this scary window, make it bigger. So we're going to be messing with the inputs here. So that's right here. That's this right here that we'll do the adjustments. Make sure you're not on the outputs and we're going to just adjust the inputs. So we're going to scroll all the way to the bottom and you'll see the separator here. We're going to drag this right above scale and there's your separator. And then we're going to give it a title and I'll call it triplanar and enter. And then you scroll down, you'll see it now has a triplanar link. We can put the uh, dash in there. There we go. So again, come in here, displacement and make sure you hit enter and you should see it update right here. And there you go. So now we have those dividers and this looks good. So now we can close this window. Now you can see it says inputs. We can also change that by renaming it by selecting the word inputs. 
and change this to like texture or let's call this triplanar. See, it loads it up right there. Let's do ultra. So you can see now it says ultra triplanar and we got color, metalness, roughness, bump, AO, displacement, and triplanar down at the bottom. Well, that was a lot of renaming, a lot of noodling. Now, before you go ahead and save this as a resource node, you're gonna wanna delete the links that are in here. So you're gonna come in here and just hit delete and then enter and then clear out each of these links so you have a clean node. And then what you can do is you can save this as a resource. You can select the node, go to asset and say convert to asset. That'll save it as a preset node. That's it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thanks so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more content. Thanks for your support.